guys! Welcome back to our series, The Last Book. Last week we started our look at Revelation by discussing how it's a book of prophecy and talking about how regular people are really bad at predicting things, like weather or sports outcomes. Usually it's only a minor inconvenience when we get the weather forecast wrong, like when it's supposed to be sunny and it rains a little bit. Not ideal, but well, life goes on. But sometimes things with the weather can get a little scary. One thing we cannot predict, for example, is where and when tornadoes happen. We know what causes them. So we can try to watch for those things and make guesses, but we really have no way of knowing for sure it's going to happen. We have no control about once it happens, how strong it's going to be, how long it's going to last, how much damage it's going to do. But what if we did? What if we had the ability to call people ahead of time and say, hey, a tornado is coming, it's going to hit this day, this time, be in your basement or your storm cellar or just get out of there. That's a little bit of what God is doing in the book of Revelation. God wants us to know that the end of the world is going to be ugly. There's going to be plagues, famines, wars, natural disasters. There are evil forces going to be at work fighting against God, even as he brings the judgment upon the world. If you read Revelation chapter 16, you can read a portion of these judgments for yourself. In that chapter, God describes seven bowls of anger, judgment, and wrath. He has angels pouring out on the earth. The first one goes to the people who took the mark of the beast and worshipped the idol that wasn't God. We know that we're only supposed to worship the one true God. The second gets poured out and kills every living thing in the sea by turning the water to blood. It's interesting because there are similarities in some of these wraths to the plagues of Egypt. The third one gets rid of fresh water. It turns springs and rivers to blood. The fourth one goes into the sun and makes it so much stronger it gives it power to scorch or burn people. And even then the people curse the name of God and refuse to change their hearts or turn from sin. The fifth one pours their bowl out onto the throne of the beast, causing his kingdom to be covered in darkness. Now. The beast is the Antichrist, or the one sent by Satan to try to rule instead of God. And it's much like the plague of darkness in Egypt. The area is completely dark. But even then, the people don't turn from their sins. The sixth one pours theirs out onto the great river Euphrates to dry it up and make a pathway for this huge war called Armageddon. And that's the final battle against Jesus. And the final bull, the seventh, is poured into the air. Lightning flashes and there's huge thunder and a giant earthquake. Babylon is punished, nations are destroyed, islands disappeared, mountains fall, a huge hailstorm happens, and it's terrible. And then a loud voice calls out, it is finished. Very similar to when Jesus died and he says it is finished. We thought a tornado is scary, right? And God tells us that at the end of the world, everything is going to be destroyed. The whole world's destroyed. And it's a result of sin. But he's telling us this for a reason. He doesn't want us to be afraid. I know that sounds crazy. How could we read about seven terrifying things going to happen and not even feel a little bit afraid? God wants us to know that as bad as it's going to get, he still wins. He will save everyone who believes in Jesus as their Savior, raise them to a new life, and we're going to read later in this book that God's making a new heaven and a new earth for us to live in forever. The bowls of wrath and judgment of the world are not the end of the story. They're only the beginning of the end. We don't need to fear the end if we believe in Jesus. People have tried to figure out the meaning of things in Revelation for so long. And it can be kind of fun to try to figure it out. And people have taken it to the extreme. They've made movies and books and all kinds of things. But if all we do is try to focus on making sense of the signs, we miss the point. God gave us the signs to remind us that he's not done with his work on the earth. The end is coming and it's going to be ugly. But if we believe in Jesus, we don't need to be afraid. We know we're saved and we know God is going to give us victory. There's another reason for all of these strange images at the end of the Bible. It's motivation. God wants to motivate us to keep our faith hot and to share the good news with others. Anyone who doesn't know Jesus is going to have to suffer those things. God is counting on us to keep our faith hot and tell other people about him because he doesn't want anyone to have to suffer those things. And the more people we can win for Jesus, the more people get to share eternity with us. 
God's work is not done. Judgment Day is coming. Just like we saw in today's lesson, it's not going to be pretty. But if we believe in Jesus, we can be saved. We don't need to be afraid. We know who wins, and with him, we can have the victory too. Will you pray with me? Lord, thank you for giving us revelation so we can see the things that are going to happen and know that in you, we don't need to be afraid and we can claim that victory, God. Thank you for helping us not to be afraid and helping us know that we are with you, you are with us, and we have that victory, Lord, in your name. Amen. I'll see you guys next week. Bye, guys.